is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we are always pleased to welcome to the program Annette Whittemore, the founder and president of the Whittemore Peterson Institute. Pleasure to have you back on the program. So nice of you to have me. Thank and, you. And also the fact that we literally get a worldwide audience whenever you're on the program because people from all over the planet uh, come onto the website to find out the latest information. Now, for, the, for most regular folks, they talk about the main thing you deal with is chronic fatigue syndrome, but there is a definite medical term that applies to this? That's correct. Um, the real name for this disease is myalgic encephalomyelitis, or ME. And um, recently there was an international consensus, again, by researchers and doctors calling for the name to be reinstated and uh, to drop the chronic fatigue syndrome. Really? So they're going to drop that all together? Well, we would like to see the government do that, the NIH, and uh, really get the correct nomenclature out there. Um, and. You know, what you're going to have to do, though, is come out with a pronunciation guide for everybody. Yes, that's right. <laughs> All right, so one of the most exciting things at the Institute since you were last here is the opening of the clinic. Tell us about this and the doctor that's running it. That's right. The medical uh, practice that just recently opened in the Center for Molecular Medicine within the Institute is uh, run by Dr. Robert Fredericks, and he's a local physician. He's been studying these patients for over 30 years, and he's very, very excited to be a part of the program where he can rely on some of the research that's going on as well as the clinical laboratory for more investigations into the causes of disease and certainly the development of a better protocol for treatment. Okay, now are uh, members of the public able at this time to be able to come and visit the clinic and, and get treatment? Or absolutely, is it absolutely. They can call the medical office and um, set up an appointment. We have already seen patients there and he's already having some success, which is always exciting to see a, a patient, especially one who comes in in a wheelchair and six weeks later is, is coming back and saying, I'm back to school, I'm back to work, I'm no longer needing uh, a cane or a wheelchair, and I'm doing so much better. Now, that's a, a remarkable achievement in a short period of time. Uh, more likely, it might be similar to someone like my daughter, Andrea, who's been on a significant treatment now for a year based on some of our research results, and um, she is become remarkably well in that period of time. But it, it, it has taken a year, but then you look and she's been ill for over 20 years, so we did expect it to take some time and she is still recovering. What, what kind of therapies or treatments are being done that are helping people in this way? Well, there are several treatments right now that are being tried and um, we hope to go into clinical trials with. Some of them involve antiviral medications, others involve antiretrovirals, the kind of drugs that they use and HIV, and then of course there are the immune supportive therapies. What does that mean? Well, there's immunoglobulins that they give patients who don't have a strong immune system, for instance. Um, in this case, we're looking at an immune deficiency that's not common, that has more to do with a particular part of the immune system, and that is part of our studies, showing us that if we can strengthen that particular part of the immune system, the patient will begin to recover. What's the most dramatic thing that you've seen over the last year? Oh my goodness. Um, I'd have to say it's a patient that was up at the Institute yesterday and was visiting with us. Um, she was in a wheelchair for a year, 10 years, completely bed bound and unable to care for her children. In fact, her parents had to retire early and moved to the state of Nevada in order to take care of her and her three children. She came bouncing into the Institute and was so full of energy. She brought her three children with her. She was telling me stories about things that they missed or she missed with the first, the oldest one that she's able to do now with the youngest one. And it's just absolutely remarkable. She's so excited. With, with these kind of results, We've talked in the past about pushback from the medical profession and from the research community uh, who have not uh, followed your protocols exactly and therefore have had trouble reproducing them. What is it now like when you go back and say, look at these results? Well, it's really exciting. Uh 
for instance, we had a researcher out from the East Coast, and he was saying, you know, I just don't think those people that are in wheelchairs have chronic fatigue syndrome. And I said, well, they were the ones that were originally diagnosed. The disease was certainly named around these people. But this is years and years later, and they've progressed and become extremely ill. So one of the things that I realized is that there's such a big disconnect between the reality of the disease and how it's been described as a benign disease in the literature. I think it's a matter of education. It's a matter of seeing these kinds of results, getting those results published. So certainly there's significant answers, but it will take time to get out to the public and especially to the medical community. All right, let's take a break more with Annette Whittemore when we come back. Thank you.